and are confident and optimistic and give hope to those that want to get out there and produce for our country. Thank you, sir. Call Materia Ture. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What an absolute load of rubbish we just listened to. I tell you what, that was ridiculous to hear. Let's hear some facts, shall we? This government promised 170,000 new jobs. How many did they deliver? Just 8,000 new jobs. Just 8,000. And now they've promised another 170,000. So I guess we can expect another very little from this government. Might be all well and good for that member to sit there and say this is their priority. It's clearly not. Because you know what this government is. This is a government of the 2% for the 2%. Of the 2% for the 2%. And we saw that set out very clearly in their budget through all of their, not just their social policy spending, which I want to talk about shortly, but their just general priorities. I think it was obvious when Bill English, in the lead up to the budget release, said that there is no solution to child poverty. That's what he said. There's no solution to child poverty. A typical attitude of this government that if you don't bother to find out whether something exists, then you don't have to worry about trying to fix it. There's no solution to child poverty, says Bill English. And that's clearly what they believe. Because if you look at their budget, and certainly if you look at the government response to the Children's Commissioner's report, it's obvious that they have no intention of either understanding the scale of the problem or of addressing it. So this, uh, I have to say, it was quite um, a shock to see the government response to the Children's Commissioner's report on the solutions to child poverty. Uh, this report came out uh, late last year. It was worked on by a significant number of New Zealanders with extreme, ex uh, very high level expertise on issues to do, broad range of issues to do with child poverty, including tax issues, income, housing. Uh, it is a very significant report and it has uh, many, many recommendations that provide the solutions to child poverty. But what do we have? A thin, meagre little response from the so-called um, Ministerial Committee on Poverty that was set up um, in government, who've done virtually nothing, a tiny little meagre report that provides no real solutions. Because you know what? The, the, the Children's Commissioner's report, what that said was, government, you are failing our kids. Government, you are not doing enough to make sure that our kids are protected from the worst ravages of poverty. And that's why we have a quarter of a million children living in severe poverty. So, Government, here's some solutions that you can take on board to fix the problem. What does this report say? The, the response from Government is simply sets out, here's all the things that we've been doing. Government's response is, well, we did all these things, yes. We know, and we were told very clearly, that they have failed, but there's no new solutions in this meagre, meagre response. And we saw how this was reflected in the budget. Today we had, uh, we had the, the food and schools announcement. I'll come back to that in a moment. But what was in the budget that really gives some clear indication? I'll tell you. Uh, we had $5 million a year has been set aside to fund charter schools, Charter Schools Minister, that will funnel the poorest and most vulnerable kids into schools where there are unqualified teachers who can teach any kind of curriculum, any kind of crazy curriculum that they want, and subject to those kids to that experiment. Five million dollars a year, that's a lot of money. What do the kids who need food in schools, what do the kids who go to school hungry get from this government? Do you think they get five million dollars a year? Do you think they get four million dollars a year? Maybe three million dollars a year, maybe half of that budget. No, not even two million dollars a year from this miserly, mean government who just simply did it because they know that there's public pressure on them to do something about food and schools, but they would still rather give money away to private enterprise, to privatise the public education system and subject vulnerable kids to unqualified teachers and an unformed curriculum and spend much more money doing that. You know what else they'll spend money on? Wanganui Collegiate alone gets $3 million a year. This government was very happy to integrate that school and to provide them with even more money, a, a private school that costs a great deal to attend for the very elite. They get $3 million a year. What about the hundreds of thousands of kids who go to school hungry? Nope, they don't even get that. Therein lies, therein lies this government's priority. They'll give money to private enterprise, they'll give money to private schools, but when it comes to the kids who really need support, 
well, they won't get anything. They just get, they get hardly anything under this government. Just the meagre crumbs from the table that John Key and the Sky City executives were dining at when they did a $400 million deal. A $400 million deal that will be paid for off the backs of problem gambling and human misery. We know who this government is standing up for. We know that they've got people that they really want to support communities that they believe are very important and they will be here to protect. And who are they? They are the miserable 2%, a tiny proportion of our community, when the majority of New Zealanders are suffering real hardship. And not just the poor, not just the very poor. We're talking about the middle classes here. We're talking about people who are, have formed the backbone of New Zealand's economy, the backbone of New Zealand's economy, the backbone of New Zealand's community, who have relied for generations on quality public services to help provide them and their children with the ability to step up to a better, a better economic situation, to greater wealth and greater stability. But this government is, de is degrading the status of the middle class and at the same time, forcing vulnerable and poorer families into even worse difficulty and then providing the maximum that they can get away with to the top 2%. What about, why don't we just have a look again at this uh, government's response? Because one of the issues that, that's been really huge for communities around the country, including the middle classes, of course, is, ho is housing and home ownership. Uh, there's a wide variety of issues around housing, including the provision of affordable housing. The Green Party has produced the Home for Life programme, which is specifically designed to provide both support for young families to be able to own their own homes through a progressive ownership system, like the old family benefit um, system that we used to have in the old days, you know, so that these young families can get a real step up. We also provided in that program you know, the, a, a warrant of fitness for rental homes so that those families who are trapped in the private rental market will at least know that the homes that they rent will be warm and dry. These were all provisions, ideas that were provided from the solutions to child poverty, particularly the warrant of fitness, the warrant of fitness that's provided here in the solutions to child poverty report. But do we want to have a look at what government has said about housing in their response? Government has written, it's worth well noting, the Solutions to Child Poverty report from the Children's Commissioner comes with a 73-page working paper of analysis, evidence, uh, ideas and recommendations. 73 pages sit behind, on housing alone sit behind this report. Do you want to know what government's response is? In their response to this report, it's a whole two paragraphs a whole two paragraphs that they've written on safe and healthy homes, compared to a 75-page report from experts in New Zealand about how to provide solutions to child poverty through housing. And do you know what's in that? What they talk about? The only thing they, the government talks about, and the entirety of this, this proposal, this response to child poverty on housing, is the home insulation scheme. That's it. That's all they've got. The fact that they, uh, they have a home insulation scheme that was driven by the Green Party, was led by the Green Party, established by the, built by the Green Party for a number of years now, and the only reason that that home insulation scheme is still in this year's budget is because we have been pestering and pestering this government for more than a year in order to get it. That's right, Mr Mallard. Mr Mallard's quite right. This government cut that fund not just in half, Mr Mallard, they cut it by two-thirds. They cut it by two-thirds because they did not want it. This government didn't want to insulate New Zealanders' homes. They don't want to insulate New Zealanders' homes. They don't want to feed kids in school either. So they'll do the barest minimum that they think they can get away with. They want, they want high, absolutely, Mr Mallard, this government wants higher power prices. They want kids living in cold, damp homes, and they want them to go hungry. And the evidence for that, the evidence for that is in this budget, and it's in this response to this critical report on solutions to child poverty. Two measly pages on housing, and only about the Green Party's home insulation fund. We're absolutely proud of that fund. We know that it will work for people and for children. And we wanted it to be much stronger and much bigger than it is. And we're deeply disappointed that this government has been so meagre in their approach. But we also know that like the food and schools programme, like home insulation, the evidence proves itself 
The public are out there campaigning for it. They want it. They know that it works. And they are putting pressure on this government to make changes. I want to acknowledge that people power. I want to acknowledge all of those communities who Sorry have Sorry to interrupt so the honourable member. Her time has expired. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Speaker. I call John Hayes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a pleasure 